Okay, so far we have talked about elements of design that occupy space. And for this last one, uh, we're going to talk about the time. Okay, so when we talk about time, um, there's a few ways to do it. And the first one we're going to look at is the illusion of movement. And I know we've talked about movement before, but in this text, they put it into this in the context of time, which pretty much makes sense. So anyway, we've seen this illusion of movement before. This is a sculpture called The Avenger by Barlock. Um, it's pretty wonderful the way, you know, his this big cape or coat stretches back. There's a, a foot hanging out back here. Looks like a hockey club, but who knows what he's avenging and what he's using to go after. Also, even just putting it on this little base that is slanted downward, it gives a real trajectory feeling. Um, okay, this is a veiled marble sculpture. Um, interesting in several ways. When you see things like this, I often think about cemeteries and and it's sort of like that passage of time through eternity. So there's a sort of a symbolic movement, but also then this the movement of these drapes that with every every time she moves a muscle, there would be this uh, movement of and rustling of fabric. So the illusion of movement. Here's another, the rape of the Sabine women. You see a lot of violent action going on here. Um, then there's something that to take into consideration, which is viewing time. So as opposed to us looking at something and getting the illusion of movement, it's like how long does the viewer um, look at or participate with a piece. Well, that sort of just depends on how interested you are or how much time you have. In the case of something large like this in a public sculpture, you know, you the kid in you may want to wander around, climb on this, hit the bell. Um, it sort of looks like an adult's playground feature or something. This is by Mark de Suvero. It's called Gorky's Pillow. So how much time do you spend or allow your spell to spend on a piece like this? Um, this is a whole kind of a, a, a park, right? It's called Opus 40. Um, it's in New York. And in this case, you walk through this. I forget how many, let's see if I can find this, how many acres this piece is. Oh, brother. Six and a half acres. It was an abandoned um, quarry. So you are the person there again that, that decides how much time you want to spend and cover, how many acres you want to cover in this really intriguing beautifully designed thing. I mean, you can see repetition, variety, um, very asymmetrical balance. Um, depending on where you stand, what your the emphasis is. I mean, here, this is why in landscape architecture and such, they'll often put a big focal point um, in the middle of it. So you can get an idea of the space, how you are moving through space in something like this. Um, yeah, let's look at something else here. Here's another one um, where you are actually walking through. Maybe you're really just going from your place of work to the Piggly Wiggly grocery store over on the other side of town. But in any case, you may be stopping and wandering through and looking through this sculpture garden, which would be pretty wonderful. And there again, going through at different times of day, different weather. 
Um, here's another installation, even though these walls are all straight, they have the illusion of movement of, of, of a very distorted space. And how long do you want to spend in here before you maybe get nauseous? Okay, there's another type of time, and that's it's controlled time. So we're going to look at a few pieces of kinetic art, art which moves or changes through time. Um, but it is set up in a certain way that only certain things happen. So, for example, this is a piece that has very visual movement, this very calligraphic piece of metal. But it is on this little plinth that has a motor, and it just slowly turns. So... You could be watching this thing and in a controlled kind of situation, it will move. You don't have to, although you could do that too. And it will move through time and space. Here's another version of this. This is such a great photograph. Um, this is a sundial at the Team Disney um, building. So controlled time through the day, um, the shadow on here will move. This shadow, the shadow, we've seen this in that Terrell building with the circle up above, right? This whole lighted area moves throughout the day. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a great thing. And of course, through the seasons, the movement of this shadow will also change depending on where the sun is. So another piece of kinetic art, um, an Uncle Sam whirly gig. So when the wind comes, his legs go churning around here. Um, there's a directional feature here. So whichever way the wind is hitting it, that's the way this whole sculpture will be oriented. Um, the flag looks like it's rippling in the wind. And you've seen this little Calder guy before where you pull the strings on here. You're actually controlling um, the time that this works. And his arms go up, his little penis goes up, his head goes back. It's a pretty humorous piece. Um, this is, I think, sort of one of the early kind of crazy mechanical installations. I think nowadays, you know, you can see robots fighting and there's other kinds of robotic competitions. Um, this is a Swiss sculptor named, oh, I really can't ever pronounce it, but it's Jean, T-I-N-G-U-E-L-Y. It's called Homage to New York. And I wanted to show you um, a recording of this. So let me move over here. So he set this mechanical thing, fire, etc., in here. Saws going. It's kind of a self destruction. And there was an audience for this. I mean, it's sort of like, you know, Jimi Hendrix lighting his guitar on fire or Pete Townsend smashing his guitar on stage, right? Fireman, the policeman. Anyway, in the end, the piece falls apart, and that's the end of it. Homage to New York. Um, then there's another aspect of time that some people call free time. 
So this is setting up a situation where things change. So you could see it as kinetic, like fountains that have all these different um, planes and, and, and surfaces where water will hit. So there is a constant, the water and the sculpture itself, but depending on how much water, um, the weather, um, time of day, this thing is going to be viewed very differently. And the water is always going to have some sort of random aspect about it. So controlled, but also something we're calling free time because it's a little, some aspect of it is out of the artist's control. So wind, water, fire, other natural um, elements that can control it. This is kind of a cool piece. This is um, a, um, an outdoor sculpture in a tower in Michigan. So there's this big rock here, right? And all these jets of water go out on it and it splashes over time. And I, I think what they're, this artist is trying to lead us to is the whole idea of erosion so we are watching some infinitesimal bit of erosion going on when we walk by this thing. Um, it's kind of a strange dichotomy. And here's Burning Man, set up every year. Um, all these events are happening around this festival, but during, before and during the festival, this these huge wooden sculptures are created, um, always crowned by the man who originally was the guy that stole the girlfriend from the man who started this. It started out on the beach, beach in San Francisco. And at the end, or the last night on Saturday night, they ignite this thing and he goes up in flames much to everyone's delight or horror depending on what you think about fire i suppose then there's another um idea about time and that's timelessness and oftentimes when we use the term timelessness um, we are talking about a long-lived sort of um classical appeal i'm going to read you something all art is finite. It exists only a certain amount of time before it decays or otherwise comes to an end. Some works are created in materials designed to withstand the ravages of time, such as marble, but nothing made by human beings is truly permanent. There are always, however, other than the permanence of an individual piece by which art can transcend chronological time. One of these is classical appeal. Certain designs last through time because they transcend contemporary aesthetic trends to express more universal standards of beauty or truth. And so we're going to think of Michelangelo sculptures or um, the Mona Lisa. You know, you think about all or certain buildings, the pyramids. Certain things are timeless just in their beauty or um, the awe or appreciation that we humans have for these things. So when in the world of design, this Eames chair is um, a classic, even though it was, oh gosh, built, I think sometime in the 40s maybe designed. Um, it is still a sought-after piece of furniture just for its beauty and comfort. Then there's another kind of aspect of this. And we, as, the more we talk about time, it just gets further and further kind of out there. Um, some pieces of artwork actually hardly exist until someone becomes involved in them. In this case, um, and over the next few pieces, somehow the ref reflection is involved and the viewer becomes part of the piece. And we've seen other pieces like this before, but here's this whole kind of arced panel of little 
reflective mirrors. And until a person comes up into it, it is nothing but blank mirrors. So there's an element of timelessness here. Um, this is called Light Wall from 1983. And it's a, a mirrored, it has mirrored plexiglass strips. There are projectors that throw images up onto these strips, onto the walls, uh, with a computerized dissolve unit, which just means that the light or, or whatever is being projected kind of fades in and out. And it may transcend time when we become so involved in it, or at least that's what the artist's intent was. Somebody said of this one, I'd like to live here forever. I don't know whether I'd go that far. It looks, there again, a little bit nauseating and and vaguely sort of creepy, but real interesting while you're in there. Um, kind of a fun house sort of thing. So let's take one other look at this. So here you kind of get the setup. There again, people having fun with light and space involving um, the viewer. Um, it's nothing. It's like, did a tree fall in the woods if nobody hears it? Um, this thing doesn't actually happen until a person walks in here and becomes part of the sculpture itself. And so that's it. That kind of wraps up our elements, including this one fun one about time, you know, which I always think, eh, what the heck? A lot of texts don't mention it. But really, when you stop to think about it, time really is an element with all art, but particularly with three-dimensional art.